What hotel are you staying? Uh, some casino complex. I c can't remember. Okay. You'll love it there. Oh, good. They're not gambling, though. <laughs> They're just there to have a look. <laughs> it could get expensive. We've been to Los Angeles and uh, San Diego. Okay. Yeah. What did you think of those cities? They were nice, except Los Angeles was a bit like of a jungle with yeah. apartment buildings. It was, wasn't so nice in Los Angeles. No, uh, I didn't like San Diego's beautiful. Yeah. Do any of the uh, Los Angeles, Hollywood? I can't hear you. Yet. Universal I Studio we did. Oh, okay. We, we're doing... Disneyland on the way back. Awesome. Oh, yeah. I've never been. I've been, to, I've been to Disney World in Florida, but then Disney. Oh, okay. Um, we're only doing it for Nathan. We've, we've oh, got, thank you. we've thank got you four, much. we've got four boys. Okay. Oh. So far, so good, babe. I'm in good hands. Amazing. Took a selfie. Uh. Hi, Nathan. Hi, Mel. This is amazing. What a view. What a view. <laughs> this is amazing. All right, guys, back with you. Everybody hear me okay? Yes. yes. Everybody having fun? Yes. Yeah. Good. Cool. Uh, Good. Well, again, my name is Chris, and this is the uh, 430 Canyon Spirit Tour. We got out pretty early today. Um, this flight is being recorded. That's what this little screen is all about here in the uh, front of the helicopter. When we get back to the airport, you can actually grab a DVD of this flight. You'll hear everything I say, anything you say, as well as the music. All of it's on there. Cool. Right now we're flying over the Kaibab National Forest. This is the largest stand of ponderosa pine trees in the world. We 
regularly see elk and deer down below, but there's also black bear, mountain lion, javelina, pronghorn antelope, bighorn sheep, wild turkeys, the list goes on. There's a lot of wildlife here, so always just be on the lookout. You never know when you're going to see something down there, especially later in the day like this. Joyce, I hope you're paying attention to where we're going. I am. Sorry. That green, that green tree right there. Yeah. Don't forget it, okay? Because okay. that's critical for us getting back. You don't have to worry about that green tree, okay. but that green tree is really important, okay? All right. Okay. He's got one heck of a memory. Be careful. Oh man, that'd be impressive. I do this all day long, and I can't remember any of these trees. Uh, we use other other landmarks. Uh, my wife is great with navigation. If you Pardon? tell it, if you should listen to my wife. She's perfect. <laughs> it, if she says left, you go right, and you're always always on track. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just do the opposite. <laughs> Just the opposite. Nice. <laughs> Thank you. Way off in the distance to the right is a tall mountain. That's Humphreys Peak, the highest point in Arizona, a little over 4,000 meters. And when you think of Arizona, or it's actually at 12,600 feet, um, so it's pretty tall. When you think of Arizona, you think of cactus and desert and rattlesnakes and stuff, but there's actually really good skiing up there in the winter. Arizona is one of those places we can go ski in the morning and then just drive a few hours south to Phoenix and spend the afternoon by the pool with a margarita getting a tan all <laughs> afternoon. So not a bad place to be. Now, obviously, the canyon is out there to our left, but we have to actually fly further before we're allowed to enter the National Park's airspace. Grand Canyon National Park is some of the most restricted airspace in the United States, and they do it for some good reasons. One is safety. We all have to fly one direction around the canyon. You can kind of think of it as a one-way street. The other big reason is noise. Uh, by keeping us on a one-way street, it reduces the noise pollution for the visitors and the wildlife in the canyon. Maverick takes that stuff really seriously. That's why we fly this helicopter, the EC-130 Eco Star. It's got one of the best safety records out there, and it also happens to be one of the quietest helicopters, at least in the civilian world, that we can fly. As your pilot and co-pilot, I think we can agree, Joyce and I, that this is our favorite helicopter to fly. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Definitely the best helicopter I've flown. I can't believe you guys are going to see this for the first time. Yeah, in a helicopter. In a helicopter. Yeah. That's crazy. Well, get ready because we're about to go off the edge, so do whatever you have to do to get ready because it's about to get pretty awesome here. Are you going to do a 180 dive, a 360 <laughs> spin, and then shoot upwards? You know, if it wasn't illegal, okay. we'd be considering it. <laughs> <laughs> I wish it wasn't illegal. <laughs> All right. Get ready. Here we go. Oh, my God. Big countdown. Ready? Three, two, two one. Oh, my God. Oh, <laughs> oh wow. Wow. Scary. Oh, my God. <laughs> 
Oh, my God. Well, hey, welcome to Grand Canyon, you guys. Wow. How about that? <laughs> this is unreal. Yes. <laughs> holy oh. moly. <laughs> What's the river? That's it's the Colorado. Colorado. Yep, Colorado, Colorado. Colorado River. Sorry, I'm a dumb Aussie. You're all right. Yeah, where are you from? Australia or something? Yes, Come on. Yes, I know. <laughs> I know. Oh. Are there kangaroos down there? <laughs> I'm sure <laughs> some of these canyons have them. <laughs> Actually, down there on the left, I can see a boat on the river. We'll probably see some more as we fly along, but... Yeah, that's the Colorado River down below. It begins in Rocky Mountain National Park near Denver, Colorado, and it flows about 1,500 miles or 3,000 kilometers down into Mexico, where it empties into the Sea of Cortez. Wow. And these people that we'll end up seeing uh, doing uh, down on the river are doing whitewater rafting expeditions where They'll be on the river for anywhere from a week to a month to do the entire 433 kilometer journey, 277 miles. So yeah, it's a pretty big adventure for sure, to say the least. What do you think of this? Pretty cool. Beautiful. I don't think that does it justice. Yeah, words don't really describe it too well, do they? It's crazy. Uh, oh my goodness. And we're just getting started. I mean, uh, we've, we've got a lot of flying to do. <laughs> uh. Now, this is the south rim? What, sorry? Is this the south rim? What, what we just went off of is the south rim. So, at that point, the canyon actually turns to the to the north okay. and around both sides. So it's kind of like a horseshoe in this area. Okay. So on the left is the north rim. On the right is the south rim, but it, because it's going north, they call it the east rim. Okay. Yeah. Want to change the tour tomorrow to do the rafting on the Colorado River? <laughs> that would take a month. You can actually do a short trip um, up near Page, where they, they it takes only like an afternoon, and they do a, uh, just a stretch that they can actually do in an afternoon. We're actually booked booked on um, a full day tour tomorrow with uh, is it called Big Dave? Big Dave, yeah, I've seen that online. Oh, yeah, yeah. Big Dave, uh, all, whole day tour. Okay, excellent. But I don't know what that's like compared to... Uh, Until. Yeah. I don't know if you're going to see anything this yeah. beautiful. There's more boats down there on the right. Oh. Those boats down there on the right are the big ones. They're about 30 feet long or about 10 meters long. Gee, can't even see them. See the white one? Yeah. Yeah, Grand Canyon's a big place. It's, I mean, that obviously it goes without saying, but um, it's not the biggest canyon in the world. It's actually, but it is the longest river in, or canyon in the world. Um, the canyon itself, you know, 280 miles long, 430 kilometers. You can actually see it from space. So if you ever find yourself in space, I guess that's good to know. <laughs> but the park is about 1,900 square miles, which. And it's about the same size as the state of Delaware or Ireland. Wow. That's a big area. 
And the cliffs on the right, we're actually get turning in a minute here and going over those cliffs. Those cliffs on the right are close to 4,000 feet tall or 1,700 meters. If you put the Empire State Building next to those cliffs from New York, you'd have to stack it three times on top of itself to be about the same height. Holy moly. Yeah, it's kind of mind-blowing. I mean, I think you beat that Empire State Building uh, tour last year, babe. Wow. Yeah, I mean, we're nearly a mile above the river right now. That, that rock on the left is very impressive. Looks like a big monolith. Sorry, I, that rock. I was making a quick radio call. Which one? This it's one here. Has it got a name? Yeah, that's, uh, which one is that? That's a car. Uh-huh. Car Mesa. Oh, look at this. I just love how green that water is. Yeah, so historically the water would have been like chocolate milk color all year long. But because of the Glen Canyon Dam, it um, filters out all the sediments. So the water is actually clear, which allows algae to bloom. And that's why it's that green color back there, wow. the Colorado River at least. I mean, certain times of year it flows chocolate milk color now, but um, not, as, not like it used to. In front of us, going from right to left, is the Little Colorado River can uh, Gorge. That's a really impressive canyon on its own. If it was anywhere else, it'd probably get more vis visitation, but I think it's just overlooked because it's next to Grand Canyon. Right. But it's like 2,000 feet deep, less than 1,000 feet across. So it's really dramatic. Um, you might remember five years ago, actually a few days ago, was the five-year anniversary of Nick Walenda walking a tightrope across Grand Canyon on television. Not sure if you saw that, but that happened right over there in the shade over there where the canyon narrows up. How long ago? It was five years ago, a couple days ago. How crazy was he? I don't know, that's some pretty impressive mind control, if you ask me. Yeah. He'd probably say that about us being... <laughs> like, oh, you can't do this? <laughs> now, beyond the little Colorado is the Painted Desert. Beautiful place, especially this time of day. The sun starts to come up, uh, or starts to really light up the colors out there. And now take a look at the color of the Little Colorado River down below. That water's not actually turquoise. The water's actually kind of a milky white color, but it has uh, minerals in it that bleach the bottom white, almost bleach the bottom white. So as the sunlight filters through that milky water with the white bottom, that's where the turquoise comes from. It's just the filtering sunlight through it gives it that turquoise hue. The water's fantastic for swimming and uh, really bad for drinking. So if you're lost in the desert and found that river, you'd have a great swim and be really thirsty afterwards. Yeah, those are roads on the right, yeah. Oh my god. They get really close to the edge. Yeah, there's no fence at the end of those roads either. <laughs> you gotta be careful driving around at night out there. Luckily, not too many people visit the edge out here. It's a little out there. 
It's about two or three hours just from the uh, high, from the nearest highway on those dirt roads to get to the rim. Have you ever seen anybody out there? Yeah, and I've been out there um, on a few of these points, and it's an effort to get to them. Wow. Now in front of us is that north rim, and you'll notice the north rim is higher than the south rim, especially if you look kind of out to the right, follow the plateau across, and the rock layers all seem to bend upwards to meet the north rim. The reason for that bending is an active fault line that goes from left to right in front of us here. This kind of jagged spine of rocks. And uh, it's actively pushing the north rim up all the time at a rate of about the thickness of a sheet of paper every hundred years. So if we came back in a thousand years, we aren't exactly going to be shocked by how different it looks, but it certainly will be different. It's amazing they know something like that. I know, right? That they're able to measure that? It's crazy. Right. Dad, Mom, you don't need your sunglasses. Huh? Pretty nice. Sorry? But you don't need your sunglasses. Ah. It's nice without. Oh. Now, most of the time, the Colorado River gets all the credit for carving out Grand Canyon, but uh, this fault line played a massive role in, uh, in getting things started so that the canyon could be this big. That's why... You know, that uplift broke up a lot of the layers, allowing the water to do a lot of work very quickly. So without it, the canyon would still be here, but it wouldn't be nearly as vast. Oh, at the North Rim Lodge, where would that be? Oh, sorry, uh, say it again. We stayed at the North Rim Lodge? Yeah. Where would that be? In it would be behind us to our left. To our left? Okay. A couple of ridges over. Okay. I'll try to remember. I'll point out generally where it is. You can't actually see it. They don't, uh, it's all no-fly zones over the pot, like the, the more busy places in the okay. game. Um, do you still have that water bottle? <laughs> Grand Canyon is uh, home to the California condor, one of the largest birds, or at least flying birds on Earth. They're, they're huge. Their wingspan is about 11 feet or three and a half meters. This helicopter from door to door is six and a half feet or just a little over two meters. They're huge birds. Oh. And back in the late 1980s, there were only 27 left. They were nearly extinct. Some zoos caught the remaining 27, started breeding them and releasing them into the wild. And now, there's over 500. Wow. Arizona has one of the five release sites. Those cliffs way out there in the distance, the red ones, are called the Vermilion Cliffs, and they're still releasing them every year from those cliffs. I saw them in Peru. They're amazing birds. Oh, yeah. In they're, Arequipa. Amazing. They're beautiful. Yeah. For being a big vulture, they're, they're pretty amazing. Yeah, we see them regularly at the South Rim when you're walking on the rim trail and, you know, uh -huh. just hanging out. You'll see them, especially this time of day, evening. Um, you know, you're just looking for that enormous black bird with white markings under their wings. We, we saw a few falcons on the way and a blue heron. Oh, cool. Yeah. The blue heron was massive as well. Yeah, they're big birds. Sometimes they'll make these croaking sounds. They look like a pterodactyl flying around, sound like one, too. Yeah. Point to the left. It looks that lone, that rock all by its lonesome yeah. there. That's called Mount Hayden, and uh, 
It's bigger than it looks. It's like 500 feet from the tree line to the summit. And it's probably one of, it's definitely one of the most popular peaks to climb in Grand Canyon for rock climbers. Wow. Mostly because it's proximity to a parking lot. Actually, up where the trees are on the rim, there's a parking lot there called Point Imperial. That's the highest point on the north rim, it up at 8,800 feet. Oh, yeah, we, like did, we drove to Point Imperial. Yeah, so when you're there, you can kind of look down at it. So as far as Grand Canyon standards go, that peak is really easy to get to. As far as any other standards go, it's really hard to get to. <laughs> it, looks, um, it looks like a castle, a medieval castle. Yeah, it sure does. Now, what's going to happen next is uh, as we as we get closer to the wall, once we get, we're going to fly pretty far into this canyon, and near the back of it, we're going to actually climb out of the canyon and uh, go explore the north rim. But as we get closer, just keep in mind that we haven't changed altitude since we went off the edge back there. Oh, wow. So that really illustrates how much higher that north rim is. On average, yeah. about 2,000 feet higher. Because of that higher elevation, it's a lot cooler temperatures um, up there. And there's a lot more precipitation that falls, therefore there's a lot more vegetation. So you'll notice it's a lot greener as we get closer and go over the top. Like a vertical wall. Yeah. Mom, you need to put your mic closer to your mouth. Like a vertical wall. Yeah. Look at the hole down there. It looks like a canyon. Like yeah, isn't that crazy? I oh. think it's actually, I think it's actually open behind it, like it's an arch down there. Huh. I've always, I always look down there, wondering, you know, and I've seen it in all different lights, and I can't completely tell, but. Wow. This thing on the left is called Brady's Peak, but us pilots all call it the battleship, and even has has waves. Isn't that cool? Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm gonna fill up the Grand Canyon with the amount of with the amount of sweating I was doing. <laughs> That's a lot of sweating. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's just really hot up here. <laughs> we landed in Phoenix. It was 103 degrees. Yes, yeah. it was 110 when we were in Phoenix. Ugh, oh. gross. <laughs> gross, all right. What was the temperature back in Australia when you guys took off? It was winter. Uh, we call it Celsius, so 10 degrees Celsius is probably... Oh, that'd be really lovely right now. Yeah. <laughs> 50 yeah. degrees. That's like 45, 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah, about that. That's yeah. perfect. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> That's my weather. <laughs> I'm going to start wintering in uh, Australia, <laughs> summering in Australia. <laughs> yeah. No, that, it's uh, winter right now. Yeah, yeah, that's why I could get down yeah. there. Well, welcome to the North Rim, you guys. You saved yourselves about five hours of driving by going on this helicopter ride. Well, not you guys. <laughs> well, you guys we were already here. <laughs> and, and the lodge would be out on our left, this canyon. It's on the right side of that canyon. That's Bright Angel Canyon. Okay. Did you guys see any bison while you were here? Yes. Yeah. You did? Yeah. Cool. So cool. Where did you see them? Um, driving in. Okay. Right, the, right before the park entrance. Oh, cool. Yeah. We we saw a couple of elks, and guess what they were? Bulls? Boys? Wolves. Elks. They were dead. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> they look extra big when they're bloated, huh? <laughs> Gross. I, we, I wanted to see them alive, but, you know. Well, we might get lucky on the way back. Um, 
there's some ponds that we fly by, and at the 4.30 flight, a lot of times we'll see elk in the water. So oh. just like cooling off. We have a really good chance of seeing bison up ahead. So hopefully we, we get a good, we get to luck out and see some. Now the bison on the north rim are not actually supposed to be here. They were brought here a little over 100 years ago by ranchers. And uh, they ended up doing really well. Uh, they're doing so well that the Park Service has to occasionally reduce the herd a little bit. Um, just because they're actually pretty detrimental to the native ecosystem here, the native, native wildlife, because they just eat so much. And they cause a lot of erosion. So, um, but yeah, it, they're really cool to see. And a lot of times we'll see them up ahead in this meadow that we're going to come up to. So be on the lookout. Hopefully we get lucky and catch them out in the open. Now earlier we did see a few, um, and I'm going to try to point out where we saw them. They're going to be, if they're still in the spot that we saw them earlier, they'll be on the right side. And I'll tilt the helicopter a little bit so you can look at them, hopefully from the back seat. But they're going to be in this can. If they're here, they'll be in this can. Yeah, there they are. They're down in the canyon there, in that little low point. See them there? Oh, little yeah. group of them. Oh, cool. Where? Right there. Oh. Oh, wow. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Now, if we continued flying for about an hour, we'd be in Las Vegas. Oh, wow. Oh, let's go. Yeah, I mean, we have a helicopter, so I'm sure the Bellagio has a uh, helipad on the roof, so. We're actually going to cross uh, the canyon at the wi about the widest point. So off our left, if you just draw a line, if you, uh, if, if you draw a line straight across, it's going to be about 31 kilometers, 18 miles. It's so smooth out, I'm going to get us a little lower than normal here in this canyon. Welcome back to Grand Canyon, though. <laughs> wow. Usually back here, it's like a toilet bowl, but it's not very windy right now, so it's just awesome. can't get over how beautiful this is. Isn't that crazy? It just keeps going, you know? We're seeing a fraction of the canyon. 
You're seeing a lot of the canyon, but you know what I mean. Right. right. <laughs> no, there's just so much. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. You know, and you come back, come here in the fall and do a tour, and it's totally different because, you know, a lot of the leaves are changing up high in the high country, and then these these back canyons, you got yellows and reds, blood red maples and stuff changing color. Wow. And then during the winter, you got snow, so you've got this unbelievable contrast between the red and the white, you know. It's probably um, cool to be up here when it's snow. Oh, it's phenomenal, yeah. And, you know, the North Rim will get an average of 15 feet of snow, five, five meters or so of snow every winter. This winter was this winter was exceptionally dry. I mean, exceptionally dry. We got like a dusting compared to normal, but um, a normal winter, it's like winter wonderland up there, it's like Colorado. I think we got your snow. Yeah, yeah, you did. Oh. My dad still lives in Michigan, and, you know that area. And he's just southeast. It's crazy. It was crazy this winter. Does Australia get snow? Yes. No. no? We do. We do. Oh, you do? Nope. Up in the mountains, though. Oh, okay. Not on the city. Have you yeah. ever touched snow before? Yeah, okay. I've been skiing before. Okay, nice. oh, cool. we had to drive like seven hours. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> but in Melbourne or the territory, any any place which isn't mount, which isn't a mountain, there's no snow. Okay. Yeah. What part of Australia do you guys live? Uh, Melbourne. Melbourne, where the Australian Open is played, okay. Right, oh, okay. right down south. Okay. Victoria. Wow. Is that, is that like some sort of vegetation on the top of these rocks, or? Yeah, throughout the canyon, you know, on top so, of like. Uh, down there, that that's all just green vegetation um, on those slopes there. That's probably means there's sp a spring that comes out in those areas. Actually, yeah, definitely a spring in some of, in that canyon. On top of these rocks, you've got juniper trees growing, p uh, ponderosa pine trees growing, pinyon pines. So if you were stuck on top of that mountain, you could make a, you could eat pine nuts off the pinyon pines. There's uh, oak trees, gamble oak, so you can eat acorns, and then you can make gin out of the juniper berries, so right. you'd be all set up. <laughs> it's cooler than Harry Potter ride at Universal. Sorry? Cooler than Harry Potter ride at Universal. Yeah. Well. So you said you had four boys. How did he get lucky yeah. enough to get on this? How'd you pick? Uh, it's He's too small. It doesn't matter if he misses school. Uh, so. Oh, uh, you guys are in school yeah, right now. So the yeah, older, so he's well, the youngest of the four. Okay. okay. Like four days. I missed four days. Okay. So that's yeah. not a big deal. That's not a big deal. Are you on like a winter break or something? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Right now. All right. <laughs> I just missed four days. And one of them was health and well-being day, which is like, yeah. <laughs> it's like you do go. You seem healthy anyway. Yeah. <laughs> do yoga and stuff, he, so it's not a big thing. He just said yeah. the canyon is, is so cool, it's cooler than the Harry Potter ride at Universal Studios. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to fly over the river one more time here. Awesome. And this section of the river is kind of the beginning of the most serious white water. Down on the right, there's some whitewater rapids called Crystal Rapids. There's a series of 12-foot or 4-meter waves, just one after another in those whitewater rapids. They don't look like much from up here, but it's serious whitewater. Like what is it rated, like the highest? Class 5. Those five, are Class 5s, five. yeah. Okay. So not quite the highest. Like, I know there's Class 6, but... Yeah. Like, do you know what the new river is? Yeah, they've got they've got some class five and six depending on the runoff in the new like I've in the new river gorge one. in West Virginia. I've done that one. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Not a class five though. Oh. I've never been whitewater rafting. Fun. These ones here on the left, Hermit's Rapids, just coming into view, has it has a six meter or eighteen foot standing wave right in the middle of them. Wow. And the other day, just our timing was just right. We got to see one of those uh, ten meter or thirty foot rafts go through. Uh. And it literally covered up the entire raft when it wow. hit that wave. It was wow. unreal. I actually had a bunch of folks from
from China and they didn't speak any English. Oh, no. And they must have thought I was crazy because I was like, whoa, <laughs> did you see, you should see that, it's crazy. <laughs> like, what, what, what? Like, they didn't know where to look, you know, I felt bad. As, as long as they didn't try to escape and open the door. Yeah, they're like, oh, we're out of here. No, 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 no. <laughs> so did you basically not say anything during that tour? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I, I'll point out, the, yeah, there's the Colorado River, you know. Yeah. They're psyched. I mean, let the let the canyon do the work, you know. Like let the yeah. canyon do its thing. Yeah. They're psyched to see it. Yeah. Out out to the left, there's some buildings. That's where El Tavar Lodge, Grand Canyon Village, um, the visitor center, all that stuff is. And closer to us along the rim is Hermit's Rest, just right here. And actually, see uh, you can see the Hermit's Trail zigzagging down into the canyon off our left there too. Oh, I see that. That's one of the ways you can hike from the rim down to the river and back. All right, you guys, I have to go make some radio calls, but I'll be back in just a little bit, chat with you again. All right, babe. You're right. That's, that's the best way to see the Grand Canyon right there. Yeah. Yeah. I think we should have finished off doing this, not started right, off doing this. Right, now everything's going to be a letdown. Second right, yes. <laughs> have you done uh, the sunset? No, we haven't done the sunset yet. No. Are you going to do that? Oh, yes, yes. We have to, That's one of our big things to do yet. So. Yep. We're going to uh, Sedona. Sedona. Ah, lovely. Lovely place. We're going down tonight to Sedona, we'll watch the sunset from Sedona. Right. We're, we're excited about that. Uh, so yeah. We drove through Sedona, it looked beautiful. Yeah. Absolutely beautiful. The, they, they say the red rock there is amazing. Yes. It is really cool. Yeah. I've got like 50 photos. Alright. You'll have a lot to tell when you go back to school. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Alright, I just got uh, permission from the tower to come back to the airport, so We'll be on the ground in about five minutes. Aww. Bummer. We'll get some fuel and just go again. How about that? <laughs> okay. yeah. Let's wait till the morning. That way you guys can get another, uh, you know, it'll yeah. look different to you guys. Yeah. <laughs> we need another perspective after that. Do, do Absolutely. It under, do it in the cover of night so no one can spot us. Oh, man. <laughs> I'd get in so much trouble. <laughs> I'd, like, go to jail for that probably. <laughs> Stole a helicopter, flew over Grand Canyon at night. Yikes. <laughs> And what's the problem with that? Let's do it. Oh, man. Yeah, as long as you guys don't have to, right? <laughs> Just drop them off in Australia, though. <laughs> well, be on the lookout for wildlife. Those ponds are going to be up ahead on the left. Earlier today, there was a truck parked there, like workers doing stuff. So hopefully they're gone because that keeps the wildlife away. Um, but I won't be able to talk to you again until we're on the ground here in just a little bit. So um, keep your seatbelts, life jackets, and headsets on until I let you know it's safe to take them off. And remember that ground crew will get the doors for you so you don't have to worry about the doors, all right? Nice job. Thanks, yeah, thanks for choosing Maverick. Thanks for bringing us out or letting uh, let me take you out over the canyon today. All right, let's see, come on. I see birds. Not that cool. <laughs> Man, nothing. <laughs> That's crazy.